Hey, what's going on guys? Today I want to talk about OS tuning, which is basically like the skill tree for Armored Core. Now, if you want to know what to upgrade first, so if you're just unsure as to how some of this stuff actually does work, I will explain it in this video. Now you do unlock OS tuning at the end of chapter one alongside the arena. And when you get kills inside the arena, you'll get OST chips to which you actually can spend on these upgrades right here. And as you can see, I have everything unlocked. So you actually can eventually unlock everything, but the earliest you can do it is in New Game Plus after chapter three. So you actually can't do it on your first playthrough. I think the most you actually can unlock in your first playthrough is like roughly half of this. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if you did actually upgrade the wrong thing, you can reset back to the beginning. Now, it will cost 4,000 comb for every single one that you did upgrade. So if you only upgraded three, it'll cost a total of 12,000 comb to just reset it back to the beginning. Now, getting into the order of things of what you do want to upgrade, I'll start off with boost kick. Now, this is amazing because it just adds a kicking animation to your assault boost which is really nice because it does a bunch of stagger damage and it actually is a good way of cleaning up trash mobs if you did want to save up your ammunition. Now next you do want to actually upgrade one of your core expansion slots. Now unfortunately you can only equip one at a time. After you do unlock it, it will actually become equipable on your mech itself via the expansion slot. Now the one I actually would recommend if you are a beginner is terminal armor. I actually probably find more utility in the other three. However, the reason I'm going to recommend terminal armor is because it is a passive effect to where you actually don't have to bother clicking any other buttons and it just works inherently. Now this is amazing because in Armored Core, the controls are very intensive. You have to shoot four different weapons at once. You have to focus on dodging certain types of bullets. You have to focus on your energy meter, your poise meter, your health, your healing and things like that. So there's so much stuff going on. So the less on your plate, the better. And Terminal Armor is actually a pretty decent skill itself. Basically how it works is that normally when you die, you just get resurrected with one HP and you get a bunch of iframes for a few seconds as well. Now, in most cases, this ends up resulting in you just dying a few seconds later anyway, but sometimes you can actually clutch up and those iframes do help out a lot. And sometimes you just forget to heal. So it is benefit that way as well. Now, the next thing you do want to upgrade is going to have to be your direct hit modifier. Just max that bad boy out all the way to plus 15 because your direct hit damage is very important in this game. Now, direct hit damage is basically after you stagger your enemy, the bonus damage you do afterwards is called direct hit damage. And being able to just upgrade that is just going to be amazing because it's like your only way to just do meaningful damage in this game. The entire game itself just involves around staggering your enemy and it's using your big boy guns to just do a bunch of damage. I do have a build video if you actually want to know how exactly this whole concept actually does work and go check that out. I'll link it down below. Now, the next thing that you do want to upgrade would end up being your repair kit optimization. Now, this just adds more healing to your repair kit. Now, your repair kit normally heals for 4,000 AP. So if you just upgrade it one time, it was at an extra 500 and you get three heals. So that's basically having 1,500 more health to your mech itself, which is amazing. Now, if you actually upgrade it to max, it would end up being 6,000 more health to your AC. So it is, it is going to be amazing. Now, another direct comparison would be to the damage mitigation. I wouldn't really go use the damage mitigation over the repair kits because one, it takes more to upgrade and 15% more damage mitigation is basically about one to 2,000 more health for your AC, which is nice, but 6,000 more health is definitely the bigger number. After this, the next thing you do want to upgrade will end up being your weapon damage. So whether it be the kinetic, explosive, or energy, at this point in the game, you pretty much set on a particular type of build or composition of weapons. So you're just better off just upgrading whatever you actually do have. Um, probably melee weapons as well if you do want to use melee type of weapons, although I don't really recommend it much unless you're using like the regular laser blade or the moonlight blade. Um, if you are unsure as to what type of damage you are doing, the easy way to check is to look at this certain type of symbol right here. Now, just to show you the little guide, um, the little bullet means kinetic damage, the bomb means explosive, and that weird looking blade is your energy damage. So as you can see, this one's doing that energy, this one's doing physical, that one's doing explosive. So if you're ever unsure, you can just check that way. Now, at this point, you're pretty much going to have not many chips left for your first playthrough, but if you end up having a bit more, I will just end up going into damage mitigation because it is still very important to be able to tank more attacks because things in this game do hit very hard. Now, going over the rest of the tuning and the ones I didn't really care much, a weapon bay is basically just having your hand weapons equipped onto your shoulders, which does sound kind of cool. Unfortunately, it means it does remove your shoulder weapons and you have to switch to that weapon as well. So you actually can't fire all four at once. You have to switch to it first, which can be kind of annoying. And you're just going to benefit way more of just using your shoulder weapons because you can fire all four at once. And they tend to be your best way of just doing a bunch of damage and a bunch of stagger damage as well. Now, way to control is a way to manually purge your weapons. Now purging means to just drop them so you can actually just move a bit faster. You would do this because your weapon just runs out of ammo. You're not going to really use it anyway. So you just drop it and just run a bit faster. Now this doesn't really matter because it's literally a setting to automatically purge. So I don't know if there's not much of a purpose to this. There might be some specific scenario where you probably would want this but I wouldn't really focus on it. Now manually aiming 
sounds exactly what it is. It's basically just manual aim. It just removes the soft lock and the hard lock, and you're basically just using your cursor to just aim. Now on controller, it means you have zero aim assist. So on mouse and keyboard, it's gonna be much more of a play. And the purpose of it, I suppose, is to have more accurate aiming because sometimes a soft lock print lock onto something you don't really want to aim at. But I've been playing this game for dozens of hours and I've never really had a problem with a soft lock. There hasn't been many circumstances where much enemies end up grouping together to begin with. So it's not that big of a deal. Just go with a soft lock. It's just a much better option. Now, quick turn is pretty cool to have in the other Armored Core games. But in this game, your turning speed is basically a setting where it literally is a setting. It's called camera speed. Just up it all the way to 10. Don't even worry about it. If you're in mouse and keyboard, just turn your mouse. It's perfectly fine. Now, I guess if you like to play at like slower sensitivity to where you're moving a whole bunch, maybe quick turn can come into effect. But yeah, I don't know. I think the only use that this will actually end up having will be like some sweaty PvP stuff that you'll see later down the road. Now, as for your core expansions, all three of these are actually pretty useful. I think Pulse Armor is definitely going to be your best one because it just encompasses your AC with this overshield that just makes you just have more health, basically. And it basically resets your stagger meter as well. So the way that you actually do want to use it is when you're about to get staggered, you just pop this, it'll just reset it, and you actually end up getting staggered, and you'll just take a lot less damage as well, which is just very handy. As for Assault Armor, it actually can be okay. It's like a nice AoE. It's pretty much going to be your only attacking-based expansion. It is pretty cool at killing a whole bunch of trash mobs in a close location, although trash mobs aren't the hardest thing to kill. Now, it is a nice way of doing some stagger damage to some bosses. However, the one thing to keep in mind is that you do get stuck in an animation for a very long time. So if you do use it, enemies can just like wail on you in the meantime, and it's definitely not going to be a trade you're going to really benefit off much. But you do get three costs if you do max it out, which is kind of nice. As for pulse protection, it is a pretty cool thing. You just summon a big giant dome that pretty much just serves as a wall to just block attacks for you. I would just rather have pulse armor for the main part because you can just move around. You don't have to like stay behind this dome. But if you do go up against certain types of bosses that have these like large attacks that hit pretty hard, you could just use this. It is a lot more situational, whereas Pulse Armor, you can just benefit a lot more. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is access speed. Now, basically, when you access something is like when you go interact with a certain type of thing or you open a door. And that basically just scales with how fast it actually does it, which is like, I don't know. I've never been in a situation to where I've been like hit by a thousand different weapons and stuff like that. And I really wished I had that 50% increase to speed. It's going to be like one of the last things you actually end up upgrading. Just always benefit more of your damage and your healing. Things like that is always going to be much more important. Uh, but yeah, that pretty much concludes it for this one. As always, please do like and subscribe because I will have a bunch more Armored Core videos coming along the way. Just some more stuff for some beginners. And I will end up making a list of the best weapons in the game as well relatively soon. So yeah, definitely do subscribe for that. And do follow me on Twitch because I should be live every single day playing this game. So yeah, check me out there. Anyway, see you next time, guys. Bye.